Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and today I'm actually going to be making a project for my daughter. My daughter wanted a Harry Potter themed clock. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. So I'm going to be using pieces that I already have around the shop to make this. I'm not really ordering anything that I didn't already buy in the past. And she gave me a couple of the colors that she wanted to use. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've already mocked it up in Illustrator and I'm going to go ahead and send it over to the laser, cut all of the pieces out and then put it all together. So let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I had a sheet of black acrylic that was 12 inches by 24 inches. So I decided to go ahead and make two different clocks with two different color schemes. For both of these clocks, I'm cutting the numbers out of silver acrylic, and then the design on one clock will be blue and the other clock will be red to go along with two of the Harry Potter houses. So now that both of those pieces are cut, I'm going to go ahead and peel off all the paper from the black acrylic. You will notice that there are some score lines on parts of this where I can easily peel up the paper. These score lines are going to be used to place the other pieces that I've cut out as well. This is just to reduce the amount of acrylic I need for templates and be able to use scrap material that I had laying around. Peeling this paper off from all these small cuts can take a bit of time, but I do find that the surface finish is better if the paper is left on while cutting is happening. Now that the paper is peeled off the black acrylic, I'm going to be assembling both of these. So there's, like I said before, there's one red and one blue. Because I used material that I had left over from previous projects, the blue does not have any of the sign tape on it. So I'm gonna have to use an acrylic adhesive for that one. And then the red one does have sign tape. So that one will be a peel and stick type of assembly for the most part. And the silver pieces for the numbers are all going to be glued down with an acrylic adhesive. So I'm going to be using two different kinds of adhesive in this project. So it'll be pretty fast to assemble the red pieces. The blue might take a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you what the assembly process is like. For the silver and blue pieces, I'm going to be using an acrylic adhesive called Cygrip 16. This is a little bit thicker than Weld On 3 or Weld On 4. It does have a little bit longer of a cure time. And although it doesn't run like Weld On 3 or Weld On 4, it does get really thick and sticky and it can kind of have a spider web type effect when you're peeling pieces off. So some glue may be wasted as you're going through this and some cleanup is going to be required. But this is a way that you can do it without needing the sign tape. One suggestion when using this adhesive is to have a paper towel close by that you can wipe down the nozzle of the glue as well as excess glue that comes off. And be careful when placing these pieces down and press them gently. If you press them too hard, a lot of the glue will squeeze out and you'll have a big ring around the acrylic. It's almost impossible to avoid this altogether. The best tip is to do a little bit of glue where you need it the most especially pieces such as these number indicators. Now that all of the number indicators are glued onto both clocks, I'm going to start by gluing on the blue pieces. For this, I'm still gonna be using the Cygrip 16 adhesive. The good part now is that these pieces are quite a bit larger than the circles, so it'll be a little bit easier to place without getting glue everywhere. Just make sure to put a thin layer of this and spread it evenly across the surface. Putting this thin layer will just reduce squeeze out when you go to assemble all of the pieces. One thing to keep in mind if you're using this adhesive is as you're putting pieces down, they do tend to move around. They don't stay in place right away. So it does give you some time for placement, but it also can be more difficult to place them accurately. Now that the blue one is done, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the red one. As you can see here, the red one has the sign tape on the back of it. This is pretty simple. It's peel and stick straight on to the backer. The one thing to keep in mind with this is that once you put the pieces down, they don't really move. So you need to be careful when placing them. 
One good tip for this is to place an edge down and not the full face. If you only put the edge of the acrylic down and line it up with the etch lines on the acrylic backer, it is still possible to move the pieces around. Once you have the edges lined up, then you can actually place the piece all the way down and stick the face directly to the backer. Once the face is down, the pieces are pretty much permanently stuck unless you use a lot of force to break them off. Once everything is assembled, I go back and peel all the protective coverings off of the acrylic. The mirror acrylic has a plastic film on it and the cast acrylic is going to have this paper film. I just go through and peel all of these protective coverings off of both of the clocks and get them ready for the clock mechanisms. Just be careful if you're using any kind of sharp blade here because it could scratch the surface of the acrylic. Another option is to use a plastic razor blade, which I'll put a link down below. That also works really well. I just couldn't find mine while doing this. I realized after recording this that my audio actually cut out and did not record this part, but I'm using a clock movement that I got off of Amazon. The spindle on this one is actually pretty long. I had intended to use this for a different project, but when this one came up, I just used the clock mechanism that I had on hand. So this probably would have been better with a shorter spindle. But this kit comes with all of the parts for the clock movement. The first piece I'm putting on is the metal bracket that can be attached to a wall. Then it came with a rubber washer that I'm putting behind the material to help protect it from scratches. Then, as you can see here, I have a little bit of a cutout in my design to allow for the metal washer and the metal nut that are going to go on top of it. So in this case, the hole for the spindle was about 5 16ths of an inch, and the cutout in the blue and red portions to allow for the washer and the nut I made to be 5 8 of an inch. This gives enough clearance to be able to get everything in. It is going to be difficult to tighten this down by hand, so I'm going to be using a small set of pliers with a little bit of a right angle to them. And this is actually the perfect fit for this job, and I was able to tighten everything down nice and snug. Just make sure you don't over tighten and start to crack anything. In my case, I can tighten it pretty tight just because the material is a quarter of an inch thick and doesn't crack that easily. Now that the mechanism is secure, I can go ahead and put on the hour and minute hands. These hands are basically a press fit and fit perfectly around the spindles that they belong to. So if you ever wanted to make your own clock hands, which I hope to do in the near future, just keep in mind that your cuts are going to have to be pretty tight in order to fit the spindles perfectly and be able to rotate properly. Once the hands are assembled, I just put on the plastic cap that covers the tip of the mechanism. I just make sure that it's nice and snug. And then I went ahead and just tested the mechanism to make sure that it spins the hands properly and I'll add a battery to this later. Okay, now that both of them are assembled, first I wanna show you the red one. So this one is inspired by the Gryffindor colors. So it's two layers of quarter inch acrylic and it has silver on the sides for the numbers. The silver is actually about an eighth of an inch thick, but this one I don't have a second clock mechanism for yet. So this one's just kind of made in preparation for that. And then the actual clock with the mechanism installed is the blue one so this one's kind of ravenclaw colors uh, the blue is a little lighter than it actually would be but my daughter wanted blue and silver so i let her pick which ones we used and this is what she came up with so the clock mechanism is a little longer than it needs to be it's kind of hard to show here but the spindle part of this is a little longer than you really need it However, it still works. It actually looks really nice and it, it does prevent the hands from rubbing against the front face and maybe sticking. Eventually, I may get a shorter one. We'll see if I decide to do that uh, over time. Right now, this is just meant to hang in the house and be there for my kids because they wanted this. But I thought it'd be a fun little project. But that's going to do it for the Deathly Hollows inspired clock. If you like what you saw in the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I try to come out with new videos each week as I am able to. And if you have any ideas for videos or anything else, feel free to comment below and let me know what those are. I'm always looking for laser related videos to do 
or project videos in general that people want to see. So again, comment below what you'd like to see and I'll do my best to make that happen. And if you want to see pictures of the projects that I'm making along the way and check out what I'm doing, you can see my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share behind the scenes photos, things that never make it to YouTube videos. And that's where I typically am the most active. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with me till the end and I will see you in the next video.